Hey everyone, it's TB Shores. I'm going to tell you, this thing did not want to work, and I prayed over this computer, and here we go. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, what I want to pick up on today, and I don't even have the right thing pulled up here. Let's go here. Okay. Um, we talked about Ra, and where we see him in the scriptures. Um... Here in Psalm 55, in verse 15, with this, for wickedness is in their dwellings, okay? Um, just in case someone's popping in on this video, I just want to show you. Ra is what we see in the Strong's um, for the meaning or for the translation uh, where they get wickedness from. And the Lord taught me a long time ago. I have videos back in 2015. About where the Lord had me to do some studying on Ra. And the Egyptian gods. The ancient Egyptian gods. Because they were the fallen. Okay. It's not a myth. That that was the fallen. And they were setting themselves up to be worshipped as God. Um. We looked at, let's see, where's it at right here? Um, a little bit of Ra the Sun God, and we're going to get into that a little deeper. But the Lord wanted me to back up just a little and have us to look at 1 Corinthians 3, verses 16 and 17. And it says, Know ye not? That ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Okay, of course we understand that. And there's a reason the Lord's having me to re-emphasize this. As we go on to the next verse, in verse 17, it says, If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Now, we look at temple as meaning the overall body, but we have to look at this in a deeper understanding because it's specifically talking about where God dwelleth, okay? Um, and just this morning, he showed me this and that I needed to bring this up now before we get into looking closer at Ra and uh, the significance of Ra, the ancient Egyptian god, how he is Satan and how he, um, I guess you'd say the doorway in which he will enter this body through this stick. Okay, this is all blowing my mind, y'all. Uh, I never in my wildest dreams uh, thought I'd be seeing these things in the scriptures, but God is amazing. He is so amazing. Anyway, we're going to pop over here. Now, keep in mind, we are talking about the dwelling place of God. Okay, um, let me check something here. Seemed like there was something. Yes. Uh, in verse 17, 1 Corinthians 3, 17, we look at, in the blue letter Bible, we look at the word defiled, okay? Understand, this is talking about um, the definition to pine or waste, properly to shrivel or wither, to spoil by any process or generally to ruin, especially figuratively by moral influences, to deprave, corrupt, self, defile, destroy. Okay, then we look up here at the usage and uh, it says to corrupt or destroy. And one thing that stood out to me, let me see if I can find Okay, right here. It says, in the opinion of the Jews, the temple was corrupted or destroyed when anyone defiled or in the slightest degree damaged anything in it. Okay, 
Um, I think that's significant to keep in mind uh, as we continue to look at this a little deeper. But now when we go up here to where the translation of the Strong's G5351, um, it is used in the following manner. Corrupt, corrupt oneself, be corrupt, defile or destroy. So when we understand what this defile is, is mostly talking about, it's about corrupting or destroying. You know, there's a lot of things that we look at in this life as it's a defilement to this body. But we are looking specifically for what corrupts and destroys that specific place where God dwells. Okay. And we're going to look at what that specific place in the body is and see how this all connects. Um, let's see here. We looked at the word defile. All right. Let's look at temple again in this particular scripture, 1 Corinthians 3.17. Uh, I really need go no further than right here, the root word, where it says to dwell. It's about the temple being God's place to dwell. Um, but we also want to look at, let me see here, if I'm in the right place. Um, Yes, it says used of the temple at Jerusalem, but only of the sacred edifice or sanctuary itself, consisting of the holy place and the holy of holies. Okay. Um, there's a difference in, in, we'll get into that, and I'm sure once we get into it, you're going to, uh, completely get it if you don't already you probably already know but let me see if i need to look at this this comparison word here uh means temple yes okay the g2411 okay that was to use in comparison to where we were um in understanding the temple it says the sacred place the temple um Let's see here. A sacred place of the temple at Jerusalem or elsewhere. Temple. Okay, so the Lord's trying to get us to understand it's about that sacred place um, where he dwells. Okay, of course this body is the temple, but there is a dwelling place. And that is where Satan Let's see if I can find it. Will we get into this um, 1 Corinthians 3, 17? If any man defileth the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Okay, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So it's about that corrupting and destroying of the dwelling place. The dwelling place. Do you get what I'm saying? Because the temple is the dwelling place. But there's a the specific place. Let me just pop over here. You'll surely get what I'm saying. Because when we look at what the Lord gave in the Old Testament as a foreshadowing of what was to be. And we look at the tabernacle, which is a physical represent, representation of our body as the temple of God today. We see there was holy place. And there was the most holy place, the Holy of Holies. The Holy of Holies was where the Ark was kept, the Ark of the Covenant. It was where that was considered God's seat. Okay, that was where God came, where he sat, where he rested in the temple. So there was a specific place. The Lord didn't come in the holy place, which was this outer room. He was behind a divider, okay? He was behind a curtain, a divider. And his place where he came to was at the ark. And he sat on the ark. That was his seat. That was his place in the tabernacle then. So there is a specific place in our body as the tabernacle. And that place is right here. And it's called the pineal gland. 
and it is referred to as the seat of the soul. This says the mind is joined to the body in one specific place, pineal gland, a single gland in the central of the brain between the two lobes. And this down here at the bottom, if I can see it, it says um, the physical brain worked by the flow of, and I can't make out that word, um, spirits through its, I can't pronounce that, I can't even read, I can't even tell what the letters were, but it's talking about the pineal gland being the place of the flow of the spirit, okay? The immature soul was connected to the body and brain through the pineal gland, which lies in the midline. Okay, so it's right here. So what the Lord's wanting us to understand is this pineal gland is the seat of the soul in this body. It is what joins the body and the mind and the spirit together. And it is the most holy place in this temple of this body, okay? Because God had a specific seat in the tabernacle. He still has a specific seat in this tabernacle. And this is it. It's the pineal gland. It's the seat of the soul. So that's what God wanted us to back up and look at. And because it's going to be important as we move forward to understand uh, why we're looking at the ancient Egyptian god Ra and how Satan will, um, through this stick uh, and other things that are connected to it, how he will defile, just as we see. Uh, let's see, where's it at? In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, if any man defile the temple, him shall God destroy. This is saying, if any man corrupt or destroy the dwelling place of God, and the dwelling place within our temple is on a seat in the most holy of holies of our temple, which is the seat of the soul, the pineal gland. Okay, so I'm going to cut this off here. Um, wow, we're getting into some amazing things. I hope it excites you as much as it does me. I am just astounded. <clears throat> I love y'all. Take care. Bye-bye.